Hi, Aaron. I wanted to properly address your points since you didn't really get a very detailed response. The points all seem to be related to historical evidence, so I'll just go over that entire subject in detail. The first issue is that proving the existence of something is more of a scientific question and not really a historical one. Historical information from ancient times regarding phenomena that have never been substantiated is not a substitute for empirical evidence. This is especially the case when there is no deductive reasoning pointing to such things being reality. In the past, people believed in various supernatural things, so historians did not apply any sort of skepticism to such reports. History only tells us about events in the past as reported by witnesses it can't be used as evidence to prove supernatural beings such as gods or miracles which are defined as a suspension of physical laws. There is also the issue of the earliest references to any divinity or miracles of Jesus being in Matthew and Luke which were written in the 80s CE. The earlier Gospel of Mark didn't have any of that in it whereas the later Gospel of John has much more of that, as well as a very different Jesus. In John, he is giving these long speeches, but in earlier Gospels, he teaches mainly with uh, short sayings and parables. So, usually this sort of evidence is only given by people trying to prove a historical Jesus. Even there, I think they are far too willing to accept unreliable data. You have the same argument the historical Jesus people have. It's simply that a lot of ancient history is like that. That is completely irrelevant. Ancient history is not reliable. That's just how it is. And just because people don't want to face that fact doesn't mean that that, that isn't true there is probably a great deal of exaggeration and inaccuracies. The better documented stuff with contemporary sources is going to be a lot more accurate than any of the second and third hand stories handed down orally over many years though. Ancient history really can't be compared to things like the voyage of Columbus or the Civil War. Those are much better documented. We even have photos of the Civil War. Documenting history improved over time, so it gets more and more reliable. You don't seem to think sources far removed from the events are a problem. They really are, though. If you write about something many years after something happened, all you are doing is writing down hearsay you get from people. That is not at all accurate. You can see how quickly urban legends can morph over time. History is going to be like that, too. People who like to tell stories also like to embellish them. So writings many years after the fact just are not reliable. That is the problem with the historical Jesus. There is just no way to know exactly what the truth is. We know that at the time there were a lot of street preachers of apocalyptic sects of Judaism. They all had teachings very similar to that of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark and the missing Gospel called Q. The best we can really get from that is that Jesus was either a legend based off one of these preachers or a completely fictional character based on an amalgamation of these common street preachers. I have a lot more details on the historical Jesus in my two-part video on the topic. There is also the issue that apologetics all have a common flaw of some sort of presupposition Gods were always used as an explanation for the unknown, so there is always an argument from ignorance in there somewhere. Like in this case, the idea is this. These people saw these events, therefore this presupposed God exists. That just doesn't logically follow regardless of what unexplained phenomenon one comes up with. There could be any number of other explanations, so you can't just insert whichever one you want as the explanation. In order for it to even be a hypothetical consideration, there must be some sort of pre-existing epistemological basis for it. There simply isn't in this case. With something like the Higgs boson, we at least have some mathematical reason for it to explain gravity. 
plus there are particles associated with the other forces. The question of God simply is not at all comparable to that. For more information on that, check out my video, The Three Problems of Apologetics.